vintage sand. Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to World War Three. Perhaps it's, but don't worry because oh, you've got. <laughs> well, I thought that'd be a nice intro. Um, but don't worry, you've got Team Vintage Sand to if see you, you through. Can see the look I'm giving Josh <laughs> yeah. now. All right, it's not necessarily going to be World War Three, but um, it's pretty scary. It's pretty scary, but we soldier on it's, nonetheless in the face of all resistance. It's, it's horrible. Yeah, it's pretty horrible. It's a lovely thing that what we're coming back to today with is the least realistic and most escapist of all the genres for our first genre study, as I said, which we entitle A Pocket History of the Hollywood Musical. It's like those little guides you used to carry around in the days before Waze and all those other guide apps. So um, I'm not going to call it Lonely Planet because that would just be too sad. So um, to begin at the beginning, I mean, musicals are, of course, the youngest genre genre because they're the only ones that required sound so if you think right. about it every yeah. everything came there was everything before musicals and you know I'm we're also going to focus throughout on sort of a grand unification theory of musicals which has changed a little bit in the last 10 years maybe which is that generally certainly for most of the history of the musical the best Hollywood musicals were originals not based on Broadway adaptations for the most part there have been some good ones this century and we'll talk about that but mostly the 42nd street singing in the rain those kind of films you know tend to do better than you know even the best musicals by Rodgers and Hammerstein by Lerner and Lowe by you know all of the great uh musical composer, certainly by Sondheim even. So, uh, although, Mike, I know you're a Sweeney Todd fan. I am so a Sweeney we will, Todd fan. We will get to that. Very much so. Um, but, so, and then there are always exceptions to the rule, and we will conclude by talking about uh, the most recent version of West Side Story, which was, I think, to everybody. You, John, you saw it? Oh, yeah. I loved it. I mean, to everybody's mind, shockingly good. Yeah. Really, really I good. I did not expect that. I did not expect no, that. No, you guys, I remember you guys were tearing down the uh, trailer. Earlier yeah, this year. I, I, I didn't I didn't see it coming. And all credit to to Spielberg and to Tony Kushner for for making for showing what an update could be, because yes. it was it was. Do we want to talk about that now or talk about it later? All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's go back to the very beginning. When's the last time you guys saw Broadway Melody of 1929? I never saw it. It's a tr it's our second Oscar winner, right? Won the Oscar for Best Picture that year. There are is, is the jazz singer considered the first musical, even I, though it's not really. Well, it's a, considered the first talkie. I know, but but is it's not really a musical. It's not really but he a sings musical. In it, so I just I don't know. What is considered the first musical? I don't know. Even today, when I was looking through IMDb for some of the musicals recently, uh, some of the films that they considered musicals was like, I didn't consider musicals, like Victor Victoria. Yeah, yeah. I, I, know, noticed that a few, yeah, yeah, I noticed that a few people consider that a musical. It's not a musical, it's and a comedy. I think we're sort it of has, going with... And Topsy Turvy, I didn't consider that yeah, it a musical. has musical no, numbers in it, but it's not a musical. Yeah, so I think we're sort of taking the traditional view of mu where the songs are there to sort of build in, build character or enhance the story. That well, that was the traditional view of a musical. Right. I well, mean, although it's, it's uh, you know it was like the what was going on with the characters or between the characters exploded into a song and dance. Right. Or the character shares his or her inner thoughts. Yeah. You know, which I yes. would say, you know, lots of people date back to Rodgers and Hammerstein to uh, South Pacific in the mid forties. I might date it back to Showboat. Although yeah. there's Hammerstein oh, yeah. again. And there's um, a musical that attempted to deal with social issues. Right, and that's from 1927. So that's about, about right when we're beginning. Although I do not love either of the film adaptations. No, of they're show. not. <laughs> yeah, they're not great. No. I think it's the worse. one in the 30s is better than yes, the one in the 50s. Yes, agreed. I'll take Paul Robeson over William Moorfield, who has yes. a wonderful voice. But yeah, singing Old Men River anytime. Yes. And you don't uh, like Ava Gardner lip syncing? <laughs> I like Ava Gardner doing almost anything, but no. <laughs> and, not and, and Lena Horne was bitter about that, even uh, talking about that in her one-woman show. <laughs> well, so I, I just want to leave the, leave the 20s quickly, but I have to mention, and I've mentioned it a couple of times, have you guys seen Hallelujah? No. I uh, no, I haven't seen oh, it. I remember you talking about that before. I'm going to have to goodness. check it out because it is really important historically. And here's King Vitor, yeah. who is possibly the best director, studio director, in Hollywood at the time, unless yeah. you want to count von Stroheim or someone like that. And he's got, he's 
just done The Crowd and The Big Parade and, and all these wonderful films. And M. Thalberg says, what do you want to do? I want to do an all-black musical. Is it a little stereotypical? Yes. Is it a little uncomfortable? Yes. But the fact that Vitor used his power to create yes. an all-black musical, it's just ridiculously amazing. Please check it out. There are good prints of it uh, available everywhere. I think it's on Criterion now. But, it's probably on YouTube. But those first <laughs> those first years of musicals were very much like the uh, the recording scenes in uh, Singing in the Rain. You know, where the wires and the microphone and yeah. you know the microphones and the plant and you know it's uh, I yeah. can't make love to a bush. <laughs> you know, that kind of <laughs> so I can't stand it. I no round tones, John. Round it. tones. I can't. I can't. It. And I can't get him out of my mind. <laughs> and and well, what I was going to say was that um, the early musicals were were bound by the technical availability exactly. of, of the sound at that time. It started to slowly advance, and that that also. I mean, it went to pure escapism with uh, Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire, right, right, but we'll also the sound was starting to advance a little more. But they were still mostly stage bound, though, too. Yes, they, they weren't very cinematic. Everything was within the the camera frame. Um, although at the same time, it allowed you to really appreciate the great dancing. Right, and then enter Busby Berkeley. Yes, who yeah. who we I'm not going to talk about too much because in our uh, alternate Oscars of the 1930s, two episodes ago, we talked a lot about uh, 42nd Street and the subsequent Warner's musicals. But that those were game changers. Those films, and yeah. not just that one, the Gold Diggers films. Um, Dame's Footlight Parade, just that incredible run of not only, you know, as you say, John, visually innovative, actually using the tools of film yeah. to help tell the story, or yeah. in this case, these insane fantasies of, you know, chorus girls lined up in... Uh, and then it made a big, big jump in the late 40s, which we'll talk about. Which, we will, which we will talk about. But I mean, so really it begins with 42nd Street. And I know you guys... John, yeah, Michael, I, I you're do not, not like 42nd Street. I don't, I don't think it's a good movie. The only part I like is when they sing 42nd Street. Yes. And Michael's a Ruby Keeler hater. So. Well, <laughs> what's there to like? I'm sorry. She's a, she's a triple threat. She can't act, she can't dance, and she can't sing. The only reason she got work was because of her, uh, Jolson was her husband. But I also think the unsung heroes of those Warner's musicals were the composers, who no one ever talks yeah. about. Yeah. Warren yes. and Dubin wrote a series of unbelievably good songs that have lasted. You know, yeah. they in, if you've ever seen the Broadway musical version of 42nd Street, most of the songs in 42nd Street are not in the film 42nd Street. They borrow a little bit from uh, from Gold Diggers, from Dames, from Foot Life, from all of those. And... As I said, the thing I love about those musicals is that it's their pre-code and they take the depression head on. I should add that I was one of the few people who was not a fan of the stage version of 42nd Street either. I know I know it ran for years, but I just didn't see anything special because I, I think it has a weak book. Yeah, no, I agree. And you know, it's just it's it's <clears throat> It's the classic fable of, yeah. you know, the, the star breaks her leg and the kid's got to go on and yeah. you're going to come back a star and all that well, stuff. Well, the backstage musical, which was sort of a recurring motif in a lot of those early musicals. Right. And what I love about the stage version, as I mentioned in our, our 30s show, was that, you know, it's made very clear, much more than even in the Broadway show, that if, if this show closes... All these people are out of work yes. on the street, yeah. and it's 1933, and yeah. it's the height of the Depression. Yeah. So they, you know, I think of, you think of musicals as escapist, and in a lot of ways they are, especially with some of those Berkeley, you know, numbers that just got wilder and wilder as the years went on. Yeah, the, the early ones were, especially the Warner Brothers ones, were trying to deal with some of the social issues of the day. Yeah, no, exactly, and did so well, and yet were entertaining, I thought. We talked about Joan Blondell closing right. Gold Diggers of 33 oh, wow. with uh, the Forgotten Joan Man Blondell number. Do anything. Wow. And the fact that in 42nd Street, both uh, Ginger Rogers and Una Merkel were so much, had so much more going on for them than Miss Keeler. Yes, all right, I know, we're going to let you, you know, get your Ruby but, Keeler but, thing but, out. But, uh, <laughs> And I'm going to refer to this, and we'll probably put it on the uh, website. I, I have a list of the American Film Institute's top 25 musicals of all time, and 42nd Street is number 13. Yeah, I, so. I well, certainly, and listen, Dick Powell is no, uh, no great shakes either. 
uh, so it's not even the cast, although the the, the side cast, as you say, yeah, I mean, the side. there's it's Ginger Rogers in there, and yeah, who were who were really good, yeah, and you know, just Ginger Rogers, anytime, Annie, anytime, Annie, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the shot in in Young and Healthy, you know, it ends, which ends with the shot through the chorus girl's legs, yeah, you know, which the Coen Brothers pay tribute to yeah. in Lebowski with the bowling scene, yeah. with th- that musical number, it's just, it's so, it's stupefyingly ahead of its time, but. As we mentioned, the code comes in, and then everything kind of gets buttoned up a little bit. But out of that, we get Fred and Ginger. Yeah. So uh, hard what to you... top that. Yeah, hard to top. Well, and no, no pun intended. None taken. <laughs> <laughs> so what is? So what are your? What's your Astaire Rogers? Mine's top hat. My, mine's too, and it's number fifteen. Int- not on swing AFI. time, because everyone says swing time. No, I, th- is... I, I think top hat is better. Yeah, I, I like them it's both, a, it, but yeah, I think I would probably go with with Top Hat too. But I mean, but also, but both of them have, I mean, the songs. Yeah. yeah. Well, because I, that's the thing. You've got yeah. Berlin yeah. and the Gershwins yeah. and Porter, right? Yeah. I, think ta- I think Top Hat has a slightly better book than Swing Time. That was my. I think people like yeah. yeah. Although yeah, the I book's always like, the same, they're in some I European know. country. Pretty much, but, but afterwards yeah. they kept going. The book. Kept, yeah, and it's always meet cute and. You know, yeah. and Edward Everett Horton, Horton ends up in yeah. a bathtub, and you know, <laughs> Edward Everett Horton. And there's only one Edward Everett Horton. That is yes, true. Is. At, but, you know, the dancing numbers speak for themselves. And the fact that someone had enough sense to, you know, see them, to pair, first of all, to pair them in Flying Down to Rio, mm-hmm. in which they're billed, what, fourth and fifth, yeah. I think. They're, they're minor players. But, yeah. and what they do, is that the karaoke? Is that? Is, I, I think so. I think that's the karaoke. And, you know, someone at RKO had a sense enough to say, whoa we got something here let's put these two together in something and yeah. you know again as you say guys you you know getting, getting the greatest composers not just of the day but maybe of all of american popular song i you know i mean yeah. just look at the cheek to cheek number yeah. in uh, in top hat i mean there's irving berlin and fred and ginger and it's just yeah. it's just spectacular i don't i i i i find the fluffiness of the story Oh, oh yeah, it's very fluffy. <laughs> but again, I mean, if you have if you have a DVD or whatever, you can just you know fast forward and by the over time the, they the made, fluffy parts and then watch the the dancing. And by the time they reunited in the forties for the Bartlett's, the Barclays, Barclays of Broadway, Broadway yeah, it, it was like over. I mean, the 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 script was so bad. Well, mm-hmm. and listen, she, you know, she, people kind of made fun of her first because for leaving, you know, and kind of saying, well, I'm an actress, but she won the, uh, she won the Oscar a couple of years after their last. Yes. Yeah, I know something Kitty Foyle is not, not great, I know. And, I know, and there I were know, several know. actresses that year that deserved it far, far more than Ginger Rogers. The thing about a stare, though, was that um, it just looked so effortless. Yeah, there's. It, and, and he worked so hard. And it continued. He did. I mean, he made some great musicals in the fifties. Yeah, some truly great ones. Yeah, like what's what's on your list there for oh, a second? Oh, I mean, besides like Bandwagon, Bandwagon, Bandwagon. 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 We were going to talk about uh, Funny Face. Yes, I love Funny Face. And um, Royal Wedding is you Royal know Wedding? Has, has some Royal good Wedding numbers. Is, uh, I think late forties, mm. if I remember right. Yeah, forty nine. Uh, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, forty eight or forty nine. Um, um, even the one he made. Royal with... Wed- oh no, I'm wrong. Royal Wedding is 1951. 51, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we were just talking about Jane Powell, who... Which died. I think was his favorite partner. No, his favorite partner was Eleanor Powell. Really? Eleanor Powell. Yeah. You'd never know it because Fred and, and, and they only made like they're... Oh, uh, they were not yeah. fond of each other, from what I understand. Interesting. And, uh, I mean... Maybe that's why the barbs are so convincing. She didn't. <laughs> she didn't show up at at the American Film Institute's um, tribute to him. Really, she did not show, and she said she had a conflict in Vegas. Well, God, a conflict in Vegas you can always get out of. And literally every other female partner who was still alive showed up. Showed up, including and Audrey Hepburn, including yeah. Leslie Caron. They were all there, and, but and then. After Fred died, uh, the Kennedy Center was um, doing a trip. Ginger Rogers was being chosen as one of the five honorees, and Fred Astaire's widow would not allow any clips from their movies. Whoa! (laughs) What? Wow! Interesting. Yeah. 
Wow, that must have made it uh, a rather dull <laughs> presentation well, for they her. They showed Kitty Foyle. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> they showed monkey business. <laughs> yeah, well, no, Hawks wasn't crazy about her either. No, she she wasn't. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I I could go. There's a whole. You remember the lawsuit she had against Fellini? Yes. Which was oh for Ginger and Fred? Yeah, yes, which was ridiculous. Right. And, and Astaire was still alive at the time; he wouldn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. Judge threw it out. It was it was absurd. Yeah, yeah. Made I, her... I've read more than once that Howard Hawks thought she was a real pain in the butt. Yeah, I get the feeling, and there's a reason why when she got older, she didn't. She didn't work as much. Didn't work as much. She did Vegas and. Well, plus the fact she looked kind of scary. Oh, I was at a party that she was at. She looked like Baby Jane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She just sat there. And I didn't say a word to her. It was just some dull party my dad dragged me to, and I was, the, I think, the only person there under 50. But uh, she was holding court, and she had makeup. Yeah, it's, yeah like the 15 it, pounds of makeup. It was disgusting. And, you know, red paint. And we're stick. talking the uh, mid-'80s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's, you know, 50 years past her prime. But, I, I mean, for me, the reason that um, that those... The, the direction is not that interesting, but it's not meant to be. Yeah. It's just mm-hmm. meant, yeah. even though you had good directors like George Stevens and Mark Sandridge yeah. and people like that doing the directing, it's not as interesting as Berkeley. but the Berkeley films are more about Berkeley than they are about yeah. whoever happens exactly. to be singing and dancing. Yeah. Yeah. This is just, okay, we're going to yeah, do the this scene. The director's choices yeah. were there to serve you being able to see how what great dancers they were. So, uh, so we've got the Warner Brothers, um, the this sort of uh, you know down and dirty musicals of Forty Second Street and that ilk, and then we've got the escapist fair of the Stare and Rogers. Anything else from the thirties? Well, that's worth we talked about. I uh, one of the ones that are on the list is the Showboat from thirty six. It's and better than the fifty one. It's better than the fifty one. Uh, just the, the opportunity to hear Paul Robeson sing. Yeah, <laughs> to me, is worth the whole movie. Yeah. Oh, but I can't think of anything and else. And Wizard of Oz. Well, and the Wizard that, of Oz, which is... That's almost in its own category. Yeah, I know. Yes. It really is. It's, 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 you have a good point. It's so unique. I mean, uh, Victor Fleming is credited as a director, but there were a lot of different people. A lot of directors oh, and writers. Worked on yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cukor I mean, and... Cukor uh, Oh, Cukor, and King, King Vidor King directed Vidor. on it. Uh, Richard Thorpe, who I've never... I'm not familiar I've heard with the name. whatever. Mervyn Leroy worked on sure. it. I mean, it was... It's like, I guess, anybody who was available that day. <laughs> Wizard of Oz was the third. Number three. Well, I'm, and it I'm gave and it gave us yeah. Garland. So I mean, that's uh, what the, a voice. Yeah. yeah, and you know, becomes really important in the '40s and '50s. I think in terms of you know, as we get especially to and it's it's a it's a movie that still has universal appeal. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I've, I, I've yet to meet it. I occasionally meet it somebody young who's never seen it, which shocks me. But you want to know something? Uh, I know of of kids who've who've watched it now and they love it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, and I know it was sort of an accident, right? That it, something happened with the rights, and so they were able to show it on TV a lot during the 50s and yeah, early 60s. Yeah, that's how I saw When they were desperate for thing. program. Yeah, it's it still an is. annual thing. Yeah. It still is on, t- on yeah, Turner. That's, I mean, that's how I first saw it as a little kid. It's just so hard to imagine that it lost so much money. It was a terrible failure when it came out. It lost over a million dollars in, the, in theatrical that. release. Yeah. Really? I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, it was hmm. not, it was. Well, that's that's Maybe true with just... almost all the films we love. So, yeah. so which well, kind of, sort of odd. <laughs> and and Garland is kind of a nice segue into the forties. The, the forties, which for me that era is dominated by Vincent Minnelli and the beginnings of you know Gene Kelly sort of usurping Astaire's place as the central guy. So well, Vince, Minnelli, kind of... Vince Minnelli is definitely one of the most important directors of Hollywood movie musicals. Yeah. Um, no doubt. And I love the fact that where does he begin? He picks up where Vitor left Cabin off with in the Cabin sky. in the Sky. Yes. That's the first movie he directed. Which is amazing. Have you seen it recently? Yeah, it's I've seen it. Great. I haven't seen it's it yet. so good. I okay. mean, and, and, you know, which leads to Meet Me in St. Louis, which, yeah. you know, it, you're not a fan. No. Oh, I like it. It's I very, do, I too. It's, it's, it's very, very over the top and color it's saturated. It's very charming. It's one of those movies that I've seen twice, and if I never see it again, that's fine. No, but it has, good, song. it's, it has it's, good songs. It has good songs. It's very charming. I think it's a sappy book. I find poor Mary Astor totally wasted. Well, you have a point movie. there, but yes. she's still good in it. She is good. <laughs> she's she good in everything. She's Mary freaking Astor. But I, I look at it and I go, oh, why are they casting you in this and not in something 
Well, as I said before, well, like how it think Hawks about it. He, I mean, Benelli did Cabin in the Sky, Meet Me in St. Louis, An American in Paris, The Bandwagon, and Gigi. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. Pretty good to hang that's your hat very, on. Very, very good. Aside from Kelly and Donan together, no, no one's yeah. even close. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No, I agree, and I, I, I kind of do love Meet Me in St. Louis. I have to admit, and you know, you know there was most a, people do. I, there I, was a ton of fun escapist musicals in the early '40s, given the fact yeah. that we were, yeah. you know, in the in the middle of the war. So that's when Carmen yes. Miranda and, shows and up. It, it, and, it is and number ten on the and list, and that's, which is well, Meet Me in St. Louis, Louis is and that's, number ten. That's what their purpose was, really, because you, you either had like the. Uh, the movie supporting the war effort, or something that was completely escapist. Right, just just to take you out of your. Uh... I mean, a lot of the so-called war movies of that time are really interesting to watch, just because of the use of propaganda in them, it just yeah. has a, and it's historical aspect of them. And and Carmen Miranda. And a tutti frutti hat. I don't think we can go in the forties without mentioning Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yeah, that is. I'm not crazy okay. about it, but uh, yeah, no, it's and that is a an 18 music. on the list, and that's it's my, and that's Michael Curtis. Yes, right, and the songs are all Cohen, right? Yep, yep, yeah, and Cagney can't sing, Cagney. but nobody got the Oscar. Well, all right, and, so and at least he got it for something. Way of dancing, it was interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm yes. a Yankee Doodle Dan doing that early Rex Harrison thing, <laughs> 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 but. Um, any 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 other favorite uh, early forties musicals? Early forties. Early forties. Uh, when does no. Esther, when do we get Esther Williams? Later. Esther Williams. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I forget. I don't mid, remember mid, what her like, first. I think in the late forties. Oh my god! 40s. I don't just, know. I don't know what her first movie is. Let's look it up. Fact we, checker. Fact checker. We just saw uh, Jupiter's. I've seen Daughter it. Or whatever I've seen it is. It. Oh my God! It's so atrocious. But her numbers are so. There are no. But there are no underwater numbers in it. She was not well or something. Just reminds me of Scarlett Johansson in Hail Caesar. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that was so perfect. Uh, but yeah, those. That's you know synchronized swimming and that whole kind of thing. My yeah. God! I mean, Very, it was just. I mean, sort of. I mean, talk about kind of having a lucky career. Esther Williams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree. Let's see. Yeah, and she had, you know, directors like... Well, Trump. her first movie was Andy Hardy's Double Life in 1942. I don't think she swam in that. No. She, <laughs> I mean, these are all minor roles. She's in A Guy Named Joe with Spencer Tracy, Spencer Tracy. and Irene Dunn. Right. She has a, so, Bathing Beauty is 1944. That's and the first one where she... I think so. I'm guessing. I'm guessing from the title. And of course, they're in this time. There are all these, you know, Broadway melody films and Ziegfeld Follies films, and you know, sort of yeah, anthology God. films of yeah, uh, one from the mid '40s that I like was the. I've um, seen it several times on TV, and of course, I've forgotten it. The Doris Day debut that she did with Janice oh, with Jack Page Carson? and Jack Carson. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, and I forget the. Uh, I forget the name of it. It's, well, it's uh, actually, fact checker. It's actually. Um, it's a lot of fun. And uh, Cuddles is in it too. Yes, <laughs> Cuddles Zackle. Yes, I, I, I want to. I'm, s- I'm looking it up. So those, keep talking. I'm not those, sure. <laughs> those films don't don't necessarily hold up so well. Although I no. I think that uh, they look ca- beautiful. Yes, yeah. my God. Well, my God, MGM and that color, and it was always the best of everything. You could tell an MGM film in two seconds. They kind of own the musicals. That uh, oh, yeah. for for twenty years, I would say maybe even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah but. Yeah. And then you get Gene Kelly. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first time, the first thing I was Anchors Away, where yes. he, the one he was yes. dancing with Jerry the Mouse, yes. which is yeah. a, which is an incredible scene. Yeah. How would you guys compare Kelly and Astaire? Oh well, wow. me for me, with Astaire, I don't see the work. It's, it's just it's, totally it's, effortless. It's, it, seems, it seems totally effortless, even though we know the man worked like crazy to be able to achieve that. With Kelly. Even though he was, maybe you might say he was more adventurous, although Astaire did some pretty astounding things in the 50s movies. Um, I see the work. I see someone trying really hard. Interesting. Kelly! And he could be a little cold as an actor. Kelly? Yeah. But he was sexier than Astaire. Yes, I agree. I agree. Not going for elegance, going for more of athleticism. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, definitely. Oh, definitely, mm-hmm. yeah. It was, more, it was more muscular, as you would say. You, you know, it's... But I have to say, in the non-musicals, for the most part, I much prefer Astaire to Kelly. As uh, an actor, you As mean. an actor, apart from yeah. uh, Inherit the Wind. 
Yeah, I was just going to say inherit the wind. That's the one exception. Yeah, because 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 Kelly, you see the you see you see him working. And and I'm not talking about seeing an actor as a real person still thinking. With him, you see an actor working. You see the wheels turning. Yeah. Yeah. But what I like about the Kelly films, and maybe this well, is Donut, or maybe there's more adventurous. He was innovative. I mean, and I love the the Astaire, the Astaire Rogers films are all set in. They're very ballroomy to me. It's just yes, them, that's yeah, a good way to put it. Yeah. Whereas you know, you think about a number like Moses supposes from where they literally from Kissing in the Rain, where he and Donald O'Connor literally use everything in the room, every mm-hmm. chair, every curtain, yeah. everything in yeah. the surroundings becomes integrated into the numbers. Yeah. Or well, a Good Stair, Morning, well, too. Well, tried to do that. I mean, for example, Dancing with the Coat Rack. Yeah. Yes. Did. Okay, yeah. but Kelly did it better, I think the Coat think. Rack should get some of the credit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta... Yeah, he was, the Coat Rack was quite a partner. That's where the phrase Nice Rack came from, by the way. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> the Coat Rack was very popular at dances, I heard. <laughs> exactly. I think we just went over PG-13. Um, but there you go. Yeah, but I had a substance abuse problem. I have, Too but, many hats. So I have a theory. I think that I think that the film that changed everything, though, in terms of the level of ambition, was the Red Shoes. Mm, interesting. Because, okay. because all, all of a sudden, after Red Shoes, you start getting these climactic numbers, like yeah. in Singing in the Rain, like in American, American in Paris. Paris. Yeah. You know these ballet numbers that last for fifteen, twenty minutes, or Broadway, uh, Broadway yeah. melody. Well, what I was going to say was that this is the period where the late forties, early fifties, where and. Film historians and critics refer to it as cine dance. It was the mm. whole. It was the whole idea of doing musical dance numbers that you could only do with film. Which, it became more cinematic, right? Mm-hmm. Which I would and, argue that Powell invents in Red Shoes. I so I, I mean, yeah, so yeah. I agree and, with that and, idea. Yeah, and and Stanley Donnan and Kelly definitely advanced that. Yes. And their first film together was uh, on, the on the town, town on the which town. is which is which shot is on location and just yeah. and very different from the brilliant. play, oddly enough. Is it, how how different? How is it different? Because uh, I, the I the haven't book. seen the play. The, the book, book is very different. Yeah. Is it a little bit more risque? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. prefer the the play to the to or the, the song. It's much the, different. Uh, there are more songs in the play. Oh, yeah. okay. It's the best Jules Munchen film ever. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and if you argue can, me that yeah. one, guys, yeah. and if you can swallow Frank Sinatra as the sort of naive, innocent, uh, <laughs> but well, he is considered. Pretty, he is pretty good in it, though. It is considered uh, in nine, it, AFI has it at nineteen. Well, so, and you know well, what? We're going to stop. Well, let's just say that this is not like the Bible. As no, far as AFI, no, but, but it just <laughs> it just shows the popularity. Plus, yeah, well, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Two words, guys, and Miller. Come on, give me Ann Miller. <laughs> Not an Ann Miller. F- oh my God, that Emma yeah, spinning. Was a great and- oh my God, what I dancer. liked her in Mulholland Drive. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ouch. Well, I like all. Wow. Okay. All right. We shoot down Ann Miller. Right, there's, then. there's some personal uh, uh, peak. Uh, she was a client of my father's, ah. and uh, my father said she was out of her mind. <laughs> That's not surprising. Always, always or later. All that spinning, later, I think. Later, would, uh, I see, yeah. But so, and we come to so what? I guess no musicals won uh, best picture after uh, Broadway Melody of twenty nine until American in Paris, right? Yeah. And American in Paris, what you have going for you is is the Gershwin, <laughs> Gershwin. music. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's George Gattari's best film. You must, you must say. Come on, guys, let's build the stairway to paradise. I, I, I admit, I like American in Paris. I like it. I love it American all, in Paris. It doesn't all work. It should not have won the Oscar, though. Uh, what, For fifty-one, no. fifty-one, not no. against Streetcar, no. no. Well, well, yeah. Well. <laughs> or but against Ace in oh the God, Hole, even. Talk about beautiful looking, though. It's, ah, it's yeah, it yeah. Is. glorious, yeah. glorious film. And, and that, in that, and in that, I have to say that Kelly is more charming than usual. Yes. Especially with the kids, and I like Nina Fosh, who's not you yeah. know not, not although, a singing or dancing part. Although, but although that that whole May December romance he makes me <laughs> yeah. it just no, it's well, it's basically the rich lady buying a career for the struggling artist, and it just kind of there's this moment that just makes me cringe. Yeah, but you get Oscar <laughs> freaking maybe, Levant. Come on, I love Oscar Levant. Who doesn't love Oscar Levant? Everyone loves him. Yes. Um, and some of the numbers are just, he's totally, and I've got rhythm, it's, it's just oh, yeah. completely charming. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I, I don't think it should have won Best Picture, but it definitely pushes yeah. the musical and ahead. And I believe that's Leslie Caron's first movie. 
Yes. Yeah. It was. She yeah. was a trained dancer, right? Yes. Not yes. A, yes. Yes. Never my favorite actress, but really? she... I like her a lot. I like her, too. I, you can see that she's, at moments, uh, that you can tell it's... It's her first movie, kind yeah. of thing. And I Whereas think, in Gigi, I think she's really, really good. And really charming. She is an, I thought, a very, very good dramatic actress. Yes, her performance agreed. in the L Shape Room. Yes, she's great in it. Is, is, she got yeah, she got better. Yeah, she knows. I, 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 I yeah. still enjoy watching her today when she pops up in things. Yeah. So and then of course <laughs> the double whammy. You know, arguably, I would argue the two best musicals ever made in Hollywood, which were virtually back-to-back, and that Singing in the Rain and the Bandwagon. Yep. I mean, yeah. I, I, I yeah. just don't think you can argue with either of those. I can't. Yeah. I can't. And you've got the two people that we mentioned already, the two, I mean, probably the two most important directors in the history of the movie musical, Vincent Minnelli. Right. And the, 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 the Kelly Kelly's Donnan. Donnan team, which, and I didn't realize until just recently when I read some things, they did not like each other. Oh, no. <laughs> oh no! Really? Does yeah, anyone like yeah. anyone in Hollywood? Yeah. No, well, it got, it got worse. I don't. Their yeah, their working relationship. I'm not exactly sure in the very beginning, but it, it soured over the years. Yeah. And it got really, really bad. Interesting. Yeah. And, because well, Donan supposedly took a lot of credit for stuff that Kelly says he did. Yeah. Dang. Oh well. Did you ever see him interviewed? Donan? You, you would think he invented the movie yeah. musical. Uh, but, <laughs> Although I will have to say... I mean, yes, he was important, but... In all like, honesty, when they broke up, his yeah. films were far better than Yes, I agree. But uh, am I wrong in saying that the one thing that connects those two films is Comden Green? Yes. Yeah. So let's give a little credit yes. where, oh, that's, where that's Agreed. due. Agreed. Because Agreed. The, cause the music in Singing in the Rain ben, is, 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 is fine... Yeah, the song. That's my one little promise. In it, the songs are not great. There's, I mean, they're singing okay. in the rain, and I like, I like, you know, good morning. Good morning. And other than that, I don't really like. But the it songs is, it is a much. hysterical screenplay. Yes, it is. Yeah. so yeah, it's very freaking funny. funny. Yeah. Well, very, and Comden and Green did their research, as you know, we talked yeah. about in that transition. <clears throat> and that's the, from the satire works, right? Yeah. And Bandwagon is brilliant. Bandwagon, Bandwagon, so much fun. Is so much fun, and it also has my favorite dance on film of all time. And it's simple. It's when uh, Fred Astaire and Sid Charisse, uh dancing in the dark in the park. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I Central can park, watch. Yeah. I watch that. Yeah, it's a beautiful. million times. It's a lot better than Petting in the Park from Gold Diggers in 1933. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that. But uh, just the ease and the beauty of both of them, and it's so simple, and it's it's just it brings yeah. it brings tears to my eyes. That so, and there's another remember. connection to Sid Charisse between the two films. Sid oh, Charisse, yeah. Yeah. great dancer, great dancer, and she was sexy, sexy, not uh, a great actress, not a great actress, but uh, a good friend of mine was her understudy when she did Grand Hotel shortly before she died on Broadway, and said she was a lovely woman. I would not not yeah, to... really really. There was a problem because the role required her to sing. She, she did yeah, not she didn't sing. Really sing. She yeah. was dubbed at all. How did they do, on Broadway? How did they do that? What did they do? She did more as uh, like sing, sing talking, so talk singing yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. but it wasn't, easy. it wasn't easy because my friend could sing. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, but who cares? She was Sid she was Sid and, Sid she, dance and any... she was a replacement too. She wasn't in the original. Yeah, and so great, all right. da- great dancer. So before we before we leave the fifties though. What do you think about the Rodgers and Hammerstein, Lerner and Lowe, well, Frank like, Lesser like, adaptations I, I like of that Lerner period? I like Lowe a lot simply because the, the the wit. Yeah. No, but I mean, does it translate well onto film? I think I think Gigi does. Well, Gigi's it's, original. Well, they wrote it for the movies. Those, those yeah, that there score was, was yeah, written. There, there was yeah. You're right. There yeah. was there was a stage version, but it's very oh, different. Yeah. Oh it's yeah, very, very the, that's the Audrey Hepburn did it on Broadway. Yeah, Stage and there version. was um, I forget who else did it though in London. I don't. I forget. But and then they did make a, in the seventies they did do a stage musical of Gigi, which was not successful. Oh, of the movie. Of the movie. I see. Yeah. Yeah, Notice we're not, not mentioning it. Camelot here, but. Uh, <laughs> oh God. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, 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 no. I, I, I happen to, I happen to like Gigi a lot. I think it's very charming. But so, but talk about that. That's an interesting. It's a musical, and I guess because it's Lerner and Lowe that. I mean, it's very witty and charming. It's cinematic. It's not a movie you watch, though, for the dancing. No. No. <laughs> no. 
but and, and you really actually you really root for the two of them to get to be together yeah. in the end. And everybody in it is good. And yeah. the, yeah. the the Frank Le- the only Frank Lesser that was it was Guys and Dolls, right? Yes. From the fifties. From the fifties, yes. yeah. Yeah. Did anyone yeah. ever and make Frank a movie Lesser, of this? And Frank was Lesser different? was instrumental in Brando being in the movie. He liked Brando, and he he insisted in him being in Were the movie. Were you two? I like Brando in the movie. Oh, I, I like actually, him a lot, and I, 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 I have no too. problem with his singing. Well, I don't. Well, well, he couldn't sing, and they what they did was he mm-hmm. would sing a phrase, <clears throat> and that's about as much he could sing, and then he'd sing another, and they strung it all together. Yeah, it's just it's just sort of odd and, and at times watching the movie because you have Frank Sinatra who was arguably the greatest pop singer of the 20th century Playing having the secondary they role, role in a role <clears throat> that, that didn't require a great requires singer. Requires singing. Sam Levine yeah. originated the role, right. and if you ever hear the album, it's like he's tone deaf. Yeah, <laughs> he, he yeah, cannot but sing uh, the word. but there are it doesn't all quite work. I kind of like Guys I, and Dolls, but I it, love it, Gene Simmons. I do too, and, and she I doesn't love, get the. Um, I love love the part when they go to go to Cuba. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But and Gene Simmons doesn't get the credit. She yeah. does, she doesn't get the credit. And for Brando it. could dance. Yeah, yes, he was he a could. good dancer. And so. That was her, and that was her voice, Gene Simmons. But oh, yeah, you take South Pacific, Oklahoma, yeah. Carousel. Yeah, yeah. they were ambitious, good. but they I, just I, don't. But they weren't good terrible. movies. Yeah, and they're, they're they're Carousel good movies. is my favorite Rodgers and Hammerstein. It's mm-hmm. so ambitious and so interesting, and it's an atrocious. The film. one exception yeah. for Rodgers and Hammerstein and I? is King and I. Yeah, even though that's, Deb- that's not. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Even though I know Deborah <laughs> Carr didn't do her singing. And she, and she made it clear. To she made it clear. <laughs> you, you heard the story about yes. uh, yeah, how yeah. Uh, they wanted to keep it a secret. And <laughs> Deborah Carr said, I never signed that contract. <laughs> and you could tell that it's not her voice. But then the person who originated that role had died, um, Gertrude Lawrence. Right. So they couldn't replace her. So there was no bad feelings that she was doing it, unlike the bad feelings with, there were with, with My Audrey Fair Lady. Hepburn, yeah. My Fair Lady. Yeah. But I think that movie works beautifully and I think I like it a little better than the play because it's a little shorter. Yeah. Interesting. And I do like the play. It's actually my favorite Rodgers and Hammerstein play as well. Still a Carousel guy, but God, Carousel is avoid good. the film at all costs. It's atrocious. Yeah, it's yeah. too bad. Can yeah. I get a just No, didn't you see a vill- wasn't there there was a version of on Broadway recently of South Pacific, right? That you yes. said you liked. I, I never had seen them I'd seen the movie and I'd never seen South Pacific before. And my feeling on the play you, you saw it. I you? did. They cannot improve this. Yeah, I mean they cannot. It was really, really, really good, but I know I don't think I ever want to see it again because I know they cannot improve on this at all. Right, and you know you admire the the you know the, it is the, their genius, uh, right? But in in in, in the forties to say mm-hmm. you got to be taught to hate, yeah, it's a pretty radical move for a for a, a Broadway yeah. musical. Yeah, so I I'm, I'm impressed, with, and you know the way they wove in the movie they they. They watered that down. Yes, they did. Yeah. yeah, not... And Mitzi Gaynor. Mitzi Gaynor. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. She's still with us, but oh, my Wash God. Wash that man right you... out of my hair. Oh, good God. <laughs> can, I, can I just throw in a quick plug for the last Kelly Donan film, which everyone always forgets, which I kind it's of It's always like. fair weather. Yes. That's good. It's a really interesting, yeah. and it's such an odd topic for... Mm-hmm. Your, yeah, I know. A, a reunion of uh, three yeah. war buddies after... And it's really interesting. Dark. Yeah. Um, very red shoes. E. Very, um, very, very. Well, I, the first time I saw it, I was I didn't really like it. I've kind of warmed up to it a little bit after seeing it again because because I, I loved the singing in rain and I saw it and I was like, ooh. <laughs> I was expecting yeah. something that was really really fun. I was like, this is this is not what I was expecting. But I want to put in a word for one of my favorite musicals of the fifties. Uh, sometimes gets overlooked, and that's Funny Face that Donan directed. Yeah, well, with the songs. Stare and Audrey, Audrey Hepburn, who did do her own singing in that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I like that movie a lot. Uh, I, I, that's one of the things. I, I, actually, I, I own a copy. It's one of the few musicals I own a copy of. I've seen it once. It's very charming. It is. Yeah, it's very, really. Very it's fun. It's got a good script. Yeah, and oh God, it's so beautiful. Looking. Yeah. The, yes, the, the, and the it, whole I mean thing based on Richard Avedon. The, the, mm-hmm. uh, did Cecil Beaton design those sets too? I know he did I, My Fair Lady. He did My Fair Lady. and did Gigi, but I don't think he did. 
So, in our pocket guide to musicals, this takes us to the <laughs> to the. I, 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 I can load it. Um, uh, to the sixties, and you Oy. know you have the well, but you have blockbusters like West Side Story, like Mary Poppins, like My Fair Lady, and yeah. Sound of Music in the first half of the decade. Two of them are really good. I'm not a. I'm not a fan of Sound of Music either, and no. I'm one of the few gay men I think who doesn't love the Sound of Music because there's so say, many of my gay friends. I tried. Oh. I really well, tried. Yeah. Well, I would say every. 12-year-old girl on the planet loves Sound of Music. <laughs> and I don't like My Fair Lady. If My Fair Lady oh, had Julie Andrews in it... it no, be that perfect. I disagree with you there. I, 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 I like My Fair Lady. I, I like Audrey Hepburn in it. I know she doesn't do her own singing in it except for like a, a uh, moment. Few. And um, there are a couple moments when she's Cockney. Eliza that doesn't... A little too much. Doesn't quite work. Um, but I think it's a gorgeous film. And it works. But the one big difference, though, if you when you watch that, we're back to more stage-bound. Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, and that's partly because of Cooker, because that's that was him. That's that the was way him. But I, I, I thought he did a great job. Although, and, yeah. as much as I have problems with the '61 West Side Story, I think Wise and Robin, certainly in the opening scene, did a oh, great that, job. That, of opening that, it up. The opening yeah, scene is yeah, great. Yeah. But as we get, we'll talk more about West Side Story at the end. I am not a fan. Of that film. Well, I've, I've said this over and over again. The thing that I find so interesting about the 61 version of West Side Story, I'm, the, the opening, that first, say, 10 minutes or so, is brilliant. I mean, you, you can't top it. But they took such pains to be able to film on location where Lincoln Center is now, yet it looks pristine and beautiful every single image and the whole point is it's supposed to take place in the slums it's like they they got like a 10,000 cleaners and like wiped everything clean right so whereas, everything looks pristine and beautiful whereas Spielberg I think does a he good does the job other, does the other way yeah, yeah. Recreate. Well, yeah. We'll, and it's we'll get more, to that and it's yeah it's, um, what it's, about Mary Poppins it's charming it's, I like it I've only seen it once believe it or not as no, much as I like Dick Van Dyke I can't his Cockney accent. Yes, everybody <laughs> knows that, yeah. including Dick Van Dyke, including yeah, it's charming. It, has, it has good songs in it. It's you know, it's it's it's, it's a Disney movie. Hey. It's a Disney movie, but it's a dis. It's one of the better Disney movies. It is. It's, yeah. I think it's maybe the best Disney live, live action, action musical. Uh, yeah, I, I can't. I don't know if I could argue with that one. Uh, I want to put in a note, and I know you guys hate this, don't like this as much as I do. I thought the film version of The Music Man was quite wonderful. I thought for what, it couldn't have been better. I just hate the musical so much See, I that... Did, I don't. And I, Robert Preston was wonderful. He's great. Wonderful. He's great, and uh, it's funny, the revival now is getting terrible reviews. It was With, dated the moment it opened. Well, I saw it. On stage in the 80s, early 80s, with Dick Van Dyke. And Christian Slater is the little boy. <laughs> Christian Slater is the little boy? Yeah. He, he was a, he was a child actor. I didn't, I didn't realize that. He was a child actor. And I thought it was dreadful. I, I thought that Van Dyke just, it wasn't, you know. Although Dick Van Dyke is in the only musical from the late 60s that I can stand. Of course, that is Chitty Chitty, Chitty Bang. Chitty Bang Bang. Bang. But, so we come to the late 60s and my, so it boy. all comes crashing. <laughs> well, not quite. There I'll, were two successful musicals of 1968. You mean money-wise? Money-wise well, and critical, critically. Uh, Oliver, which I, oh. didn't, I don't care for the musical. Yeah, I don't like it either. And the one that's on this list is Funny Girl. And I'll be fascinated. Goodbye, gorgeous. I'll be fascinated to see how this new revive the first time they revived it. With in Beanie. Over 50 yeah, years. I'm excited. I, well, here's my take on Funny Girl. For years, I hadn't seen it. And then I was on TV, so I said, okay, well, I could never get through it. And finally, a few weeks after 9 11, it was showing at the Ziegfeld Theater, and I thought, I just gotta get out of here. I'm gonna go sit through, make myself sit through Funny Girl. And I know I could never get through, through it because it doesn't have a second act. Yeah. It has a terrible second act. Agreed. And unless they really rewrite uh, th uh, this new version, and I, I know Harvey Firestein is involved in it, but I, I don't see it being successful. Nope. Don't love it in the first place. Well, and as for Oliver, I mean, first of all, Oliver will go down in infamy as the film that beat 2001 for Best Picture. 2001 but wasn't even nominated. Yeah, it just kills me. All right, I'm not even going there. But I, I don't... It's amazing I, that Oliver Reed... I mean, Oliver... 
Carol Reed. Carol Reed. Sir Carol, Carol Reed. Reed. All the Reed is in it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, I confuse my reads. I can remember one. I mean, consider yourself. Uh, that's the, the only song I can remember from it. Uh, At age 13. I didn't care for yeah, it. Yeah, I really. And then that's not even talking about the Dr. Doolittles and the Paint oh. Your Wagons and the... Camelot. And Camelot. Camelot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Camelot is bad. What happened? Do you guys have... We've talked well, about this. It was the success of the sound... The Camelot, the original, is not... I mean, it's, got it's not like, that good. It's it's that one song and that's it. It's really not that good. It, it's, <laughs> and it's repeated throughout. <laughs> it was the success... Although it seems a bit bizarre. It was... <laughs> It was the success Young of man. The Sound of Music. Now, you got to remember, The Sound of Music finally overtook Gone with the Wind as the biggest moneymaker of all time. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, and, it, it, and it lost its place two years later when they re-released Gone with the Wind in theaters. And I guess it was sort of an in-between time for the Broadway musical, too, because Sondheim hadn't arrived no. yet. and well, the, technically he Sort had. of, yeah. I mean, funny Forum thing. is not, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's not a great that's a That's a poor movie. Yeah, it's not a good film. Yeah. <laughs> no. And sh- that should have been good. I, and Richard Lester's a good director. I don't know what happened. And of course, as we've said in these pages before, the fact that they're pumping out these, like, Hello, Dolly, I mean, these big, lavish musicals. Directed by... Gene Kelly. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you did have the two Beatles movies. Yeah. I don't... Re- I, they, those are not songs that... Adv- but that advance the, plot, the story. But I, I know what you mean. I love, oh, well, I love a Hard Day's Night. I love yeah. a Hard I Day's like Night. I don't so you don't, I haven't seen Help in years. Yeah, I remember... I, well, Hard Day's Night is better. Much. I remember loving Help when I was a kid, when I was a lover. It was fun. Yeah. 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 Leo McKern. Yeah. To me, anything yeah. Leo McKern is in. Yeah. And but they're considered musicals. Yeah, no, I get but I But they're not in the traditional musical And form Yellow because, Submarine. Don't right. forget that. Yellow Submarine. Oh, well, which, when, is, uh, which is great. Yeah. When I think of late 60s musicals, I think of Fiddler. And Jewison's Fiddler on the Roof is... Okay. It okay. was considered good. Okay. It was nominated for Best Picture, wasn't it? It got seven nominations. It got, for the most part, very, very good reviews. My problem with he's that... Topol. He's too young. Yeah. A 34-year-old playing Tevia, and I'm sorry, even with the beard, he looks like he's 34. I've since saw him on stage. A friend of mine uh, was the fiddler, and um, I, in that production, he is right. He is good in that, but he's age-appropriate. Yeah, why, uh, why could uh, did they not get zero muscle? I, I don't know. I, 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 guess I know he's he was very hard to work with. but Yeah, and yeah. I, I got a feeling, too, it was also because of the failure of Funny Thing. Really, I never. That might have had something to do. with I never them. thought of that. Yeah, but then, so we come to the seventies, eighties, nineties. I mean, it's thirty years of real dark ages for musical. I mean, yeah, you know, just, there's there's Grease, yeah. which is sort of a standalone hit. If you want to consider Rocky Horror, you know, a successful seventies musical, but that's a very backdoor yeah, kind yeah. of you success. Have, you have cabaret. Yes, in Cabaret. Which was... It's so funny because I know Cabaret is considered a musical, but whenever I think of the movie, I don't think of it yeah, as a musical. Because... I, I guess just because of what it's really about. Right, yeah, but it is. And it, 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 and it, it is it is one of the few musicals where the so-called book seems to pr- dominate more than the Right. And the Fosse, did it, Fosse did that deliberately. He wanted it as different from the Broadway musical yeah. as possible. Um I'm not, he, I am not crazy about it. I, I, you're still mad that uh, uh, Fosse beat Coppola for the Oscar, and I am too. Well, oh, yeah. Well, well, two that's a whole other story. No, <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't really like Fosse as a, as a director. Yeah. I, I, it's like cut, 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 cut. Kind of. I'm trying to think what else I saw. Oh, Man of La Mancha. I remember oh, seeing that at Radio, at Radio oh, City with oh. the whole show when I was six years old back oh, in 71. Oh, my God, that was awful. That I was think the... I would have rather had seen a, a, a marathon reading of Don oh, Quixote. <laughs> that was... That all was, singing, all dancing. That was... Piece of trivia. That was the movie that ended the road show. Is that right? Yeah. They just... Yeah, Tarantino tried to bring it back with with, uh, with, yeah. well, with but, the whole thing with uh, yeah. reserved seats and the intermission and, and intermission the overture and uh, because it was such a failure. Peter although, O'Toole, although actually, uh, what's her name? Sophia Loren was actually was pretty good, good in it. As, yep. Peter O'Toole, Peter O'Toole admits <laughs> that he can't sing a note. I mean, but then he was in the physical version of Mr. Chips. Goodbye, Mr. Oh, Chips. That was '69, right? Yes. Same period. Yeah. And terrible. that was actually considered a good movie. He got nominated for that, and he can't sing. And he's the first to admit it. I can't sing. Oh, yeah. And then they put him in Man of La Mancha, which 
<laughs> Fortunately, they dubbed. I remember as a kid really liking the, the, the stage version of Man of La Mancha. Then when, and I saw it then in college, Richard Kiley came back to it, and I didn't like it as much. And I think the music is kind of... It's really Heavy cheesy. Handed. It's yeah. really cheesy. <laughs> yeah. But um, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> uh, so anything, I, I'm going to throw in Frank Oz's um, adaptation of Little Shop of Horrors, which I thought well, that's, was, oh, that's, that's pretty eight, good. Eighties, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying seventies, eighties, nineties. I, I, I got to mention there are some really whoppers of the seventies. Bad musicals, you mean? The worst, and it should not be. And I've mentioned this before. Is the film version of A Little Night Music? It is so. How do you blow that one? They blew it. They blew it. Uh, I've quoted this before, but it's my favorite Pauline Kael quote. Not only did Harold Prince look like he had never (laughs) directed a musical, a movie before, he looks like he had never seen a movie before. It is horribly edited. It's Elizabeth Taylor supposedly did did sing "Sin in the Clowns." They. They spent the exact, it was the exact same budget as Star Wars, and you'd never know it. Wow. It is so bad. The other Lulu from the 70s is Mame. I never, oh, even, I never oh. even saw it. Was Lucille Ball? Or? Yes. Yeah. She bought the rights. And I remember really liking it when I was a kid, and I think that's a musical that doesn't really hold up either with um, Angela Lansbury. But Lucille Ball was considered a star, and they would gauze her. Uh, for her scenes because she was way too, too old. 106. Yeah. yeah. And she's, <laughs> she's... True story. She's she terrible. look a year older than 105. Exactly. She's terrible in it. It was her last theatrical movie. It it, it bombed. It was the Easter show at Radio City Music Hall. Mm. But it was it was truly awful. So any live action musicals worth mentioning from the 70s, 80s, 90s? Remember Madonna did Evita, which was atrocious. Oh, atrocious. Um... Actually, didn't I, Coppola do a musical? Yes, one from the heart. One from the, the heart. heart. That's yes. right. Yes, and which has gotten it's, some it's, re. Mm, no. Mm, well, I only. Saw I thought it, I thought some it'd be optimistic. Some people, well, some people I know. Some people like it. It's. Uh, yeah, it's not. Um, I from from uh, plays. There's the best little horror house in Texas. Oh God! Yeah. Right. Yes. Um. Fame, well, now, this was original Fame, which I didn't care for. Yeah, I liked it Parker. because the kids were my age, so. Uh, chorus Line, which is awful. Awful, with Michael awful. Douglas, yeah. yeah. Oh, and my Richard God. Attenborough should, well, Ooh. he's one of the most overrated directors. Terrible. Of Hollywood. Uh, I kind of liked Robert Altman's Popeye. You, you stand very much alone on Do the- I? <laughs> I? I remember, I haven't seen it since. I remember really liking mm, Shelley Duvall. I thought Duvall. it was a good try. I, 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 I thought Shelley Duvall did a really good olive oil. Yeah, and I thought yes. Robin Williams was, was a good, good Popeye. Popeye. Just, just, yeah, I, I thought it was okay. Material it was cartoony. Um, uh, my least, I, my least favorite, work. which was very, very successful, was Yentl. <laughs> Streisand's directorial debut. And, yeah. Papa, can you hear me? Oh. <laughs> See, there I will, I, will, there was, I will agree with you with there was, <laughs> Marilyn Bergman. The Alan Marilyn Bergman. I will agree with in you. 81, <laughs> in 81, there was Pennies from Heaven with Steve Martin and Christopher Walken. Did you like it? I don't remember. I, I saw did, it when I, it came I did out. Like I did like it. it. I liked the t- the, someone made a TV series of it. Yeah. Of, of, it was um, a British TV the series. BBC, yeah. Potter. Was better. Yeah. Was, yeah. was, was darker yes. and I better. thought it was pretty good. It was unexpected. Herbert Ross directed it, right? It was kind of, I think, I think so. Pennies from Heaven. That was kind of unexpected. Yeah. yeah. And, it, wasn't and a su- well, it wasn't a successful film. There yeah, was, yeah, there well, was the Woody Allen, uh, yeah, No One Can Sing musical. I like that movie. I tried. I really tried. I... I thought it worked. We're talking about everyone says, says I love says, you. Says I love you from, from 96. 96. Yep. Uh, everybody, he didn't allow anyone except for Drew Barrymore to, to dub because apparently Drew Barrymore is totally tone deaf. I remember reading that, uh, who was it? <sighs> Julie Roberts? Yeah, yes. That she was, she said that she was incredibly nervous. Yep. Yeah. You could tell. When she's saying, yeah, yeah, you can, like, but it worked because she becomes vulnerable. Yeah. So it worked. I thought it was a good, I thought it was one of, definitely one of his better scripts. It it made me laugh. And I loved the very end with uh, Woody Allen and Goldie Hawn uh, dancing in Paris. Yes, that was lovely. Yeah. But 
Um, not a good time, but... I can understand why he wanted to make it. Oh, I, sure. It doesn't all quite work, but it has moments. It has its moments. And, and you know, La La Land is, is you know, you know I, we've fought about this one ever since the beginning of the podcast, but, you know, I think that's another variation on that theme. Oh, also, I want the couple... Well, should we mention... Umbrellas of Shoreboard? No, because we're only doing Hollywood musicals, but... Um, okay. okay. But uh, There's a couple from the 70s that I, 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 I forgot to mention. No, listen, we... I do like... I think this... And this didn't get... It didn't do well, and it did not get its due. I think the film version of 1776 works. I do like I that. I like it. Yes. And it did yes, it... not do well... And with Ken Howard, Ken, and it was almost the entire original Howard DeSilva Broadway yeah, cast, yeah, yeah. except for uh, I think Blythe Danner wasn't huh. the original. Um, movie, movie. That's kind Stanley of Stanley Thomas, yeah. yeah, and that's from the seventies. Ken Russell's well, the boy, sort of a satire of a movie. It is, <laughs> but they do numbers in yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Uh, I like Rock and Roll High School. I consider that a musical. I guess, yeah. Listen, it was just was on, the, it was on turn just a few that weeks ago. That brought the Ramones to a, a yeah. wider audience. Yep. Um, another one that didn't do well, but I kind of like his hair. Moments. There it has were, moments. There. I agree. Yeah, it doesn't all quite work. It has moments. It should it's, have been good. I remember very... liking Treat Williams when I saw. Yeah, it. that was his first. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's claim to fame. It was too glossy looking. Yeah. Really. I didn't think so. Yeah, it just it's it, I'm in it, it, it didn't but go you can't it see didn't me. go with the subject matter. <laughs> Look for Mike. Um, did I say Ken Russell's the boyfriend? The with the, is that the Twiggy Twiggy and Tommy Toon. I thought that actually worked. No, not Tommy Toon. No, uh, that's my one and that's only, my one on and stage. only on stage. That's right. Um, that I thought had a very good script, and then from the seventies also, there's my the worst movie I consider ever. At long made. last love. No, Damn. one that's worse. There's a worse movie than At Long Last Love. I will be talking about it during the necrology a little bit. Lost Horizon. I That's right. I forgot it was a musical. That is God. the worst movie ever made by a Hollywood studio, and I, I stand by it. It's just, it, it's atrocious in so many ways. In so it's, many ways. And it, 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 it pretty is, much... It is, it is listed in the Book of Lists as one of the worst movies yeah. ever made. And it, and it pretty yeah. much, yeah. sadly, it pretty much was the beginning and end of Liv Ullman's Hollywood career. Unfortunate. Yeah, which yeah. is too bad. It is yeah. too bad. It's a great novel. Why did but she do that? I don't know. Everybody paid her a lot of money. I remember when it came out, the, the publicity. It was yeah, I hope, they, I hope they paid her a lot. I mean, she probably went down and then went back to Bergman and they probably <laughs> financed the movie. <laughs> she did another Hollywood movie which she was ill-equipped for, uh, 40 Carats, mm. with Gene Kelly. And that was not a success either because she wasn't even 40 when she made it. It was like, really? It's the, that's the whole point. So... And and then and I like Scrooge with Albert Finney. I think that's. I've musical. never seen it. Oh, it's good. It's good, and I know you like, like everything you like we would think with Albert, Albert Finney. Finney. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't like Annie. Oh, ooh. yeah, that's right. We didn't even Annie. mention John Tomorrow. Houston. Tomorrow. Oh no, God. I like I like the original Broadway musical a lot, but. John Huston admitted the only reason he directed it was to pay off gambling debts. Yeah, it exactly. Looks like it. <laughs> it no, sounds it, like him too. And the and the re- the remake from fourteen with the the girl from uh, Beast of the Southern Wild was terrible. Was it? it I was understand awful. the one. There was another one TV movie TV with Kathy one, yeah. Bates, which I heard was pretty good. Uh, I didn't see it, but I liked the original play a lot. But so to get back to um, you know Little Shop of Horrors for a second, Disney. Disney is a monster now. They are yes, an unstoppable yes. monster. But occasionally, someone there makes a good decision. And, for example, saying, hey, let's let that maniac Julie, Julie Tamer direct the stage version of Lion King. And it's extraordinary. Is it? I've it never, is. It completely is. I've I never mean, seen it because I hated the movie. Well, but <laughs> she's... I'm a huge, fan of, huge fan of hers. And someone at Disney you hated saw the the animated version. Yeah, I did not like it. I didn't like it either because I, I was offended by it. you had had these incredible songs by Mencken and Ashman, who I'm about to talk about, and then you get the Elton John Tim Wright. Elton John says he wrote the songs in about 15 minutes, yeah. and it sounds like it. And they're great. I mean, a couple of them are you know Circle of Life, and you know are really there's mm-hmm. they're perennials, but yeesh. But someone at Disney saw a Little Shop on stage when it was over here at the Orpheum back in the yeah. mid-80s and said, wait a minute, 
we haven't had a, an animated musical hit since Jungle Book in 67. Yeah. Let's get these guys yeah. to, uh, and from that, you get... Yeah, Beauty and the Beast. You, you get Little Mermaid first, which is extraordinary. Beauty and the Beast, which is even better. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, my favorite Disney movie ever, period, full stop. Really? And, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then Howard Ashman, the lyricist, who... I like who 101 is, Dalmatians. <laughs> you Cruella de Vil fan. Um, I am. So, and and Howard Ashman, who wrote, you know, just, for my money, one of the most brilliant lyricists in the last hundred years. I'm sorry. I'd put him almost in league with Gilbert and Cole Porter and Sondheim, even. I mean, listen closely. They're brilliant, brilliant rhymes. And for... So, well, whatever whatever you think of them, they completely rejuvenated yeah. the, whole, right. the whole idea and of the so musical. And so our, our theory is that the the... Hollywood musical never disappeared. It just subverted into animated. Yeah, animated. And you get that wonderful run. Ashman dies halfway through yeah. Aladdin of age. It's 1991, yeah, 92. A terrible, terrible loss. So he finishes it, I think, with um, uh, with Rice or maybe with Stephen Sh- Stephen Schwartz is in there too. For yeah. A great run. Pocahontas and uh, Hunchback and Hercules and I Mulan. Like and yeah, some that just run and that sort of sustains us through And it reintroduced the 90s. a lot of children to the whole idea of the musical. Yeah. Right. And if you look at some of the other think about Be, Be Our Guest from um, from Beauty and the Beast, mm-hmm. it stays like a Busby Berkeley yeah. number. Yeah. You know, with the camera above looking down Although, and everything moving in. I only saw about 25 minutes of it on the plane, the uh, live action Beauty and the Beast, I no, guess, did not work. No, I saw the live action Lion King, too. That was horrible. Oh. Well, Disney's like, hey, we can squeeze this and it'll make more money. So, yeah. And <laughs> so, and the film that as we come to this century, the film that's sort of oddly and out of left field, Australia, uh, restores the live action musical is Moulin Rouge. Yep. Yeah, which shouldn't have been a hit, which it had no business doing as well as it did, which is edited not for the epileptic. And <laughs> <laughs> I am not an epileptic. But it's it's. I mean, it's a cut every well, half second. Well, basically designed for the someone with the attention span of a pea. <laughs> right. No, and and but somehow it works. But the sets are beautiful. Yeah, I would have liked the movie a lot if it hadn't been for the editing. Yeah. But it, and it, regardless of how you feel about Moulin Rouge, it brought back the musical, yeah. and the musical has never gone away. No, and the, for the, the, last the following years. year, right? Chicago. Chicago was a huge hit. I didn't like it. I liked the original. My my play. my view of Chicago is like watching two hours of coming attractions. Yeah, and it's, it's, the, way, it's, it's also, the way it's edited. When it's you just, have the lead actress who's supposed to dance, and you never see her dance because she can't dance. Apparently. Yeah, well, yeah. that's the other. Yeah, well, that's they a did bit the same problem. thing with Richard Gere yeah. too. The way he's supposed to be dancing, and they put the camera up on yeah. his head and shoulders, and it's like, and he couldn't really sing either. And yeah, that's it's the like, best why picture. did you cast him? Okay. So, and and there were plenty of getting back to our original grand unification theory. Some of the worst films of this century it more like have grand been, unification it. theme <laughs> it's physics um is, is is you know you think about i've just got on my list cats I the, didn't, I the didn't film of Phantom of the Opera. The film, 20 minutes. The film of Nine. Nine was a bitter disappointment. Because I love that. Daniel Day-Lewis, come on. I love, yeah. love that show. Daniel Day-Lewis was miscast. It was terrible. I was, I, I, and I love that show so much. Dear Evan Hansen and Rent. Dear Evan Hansen Sh- gets my vote for the worst movie of this year. Shame on them for casting people in their th- early, almost early 30s as teens. Yeah. Um, didn't quite get that. That's Rent. West Side Story. Um, original. Yeah. <laughs> I hate both. I, I I saw the first Mamma Mia and part of this. <gasps> oh, yeah, I, yeah, I know, right? Oh, I, one of Well Streep's mistakes, big mistakes. <laughs> right, as was um, as was the prom. Oh, the prom. Yeah. And the prom was such a lovely piece on stage. Yeah, I, it's I, it's just it was it was so sad. Don't I me mean, and we everyone forgets Eastwood made a film of Jersey Boys. Yeah. Well. That wasn't bad. It was. It, I the original. I saw because I just I'm not a fan of the Four Seasons. So yeah, no, 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 And I just like watching this, going, I don't care. 
No, and I felt that way about Abbasan. We, we're all Sondheim fans here. I did not like the Into the Woods, even though that did pretty well. It did pretty well. I liked it better than the play, but I don't. It's one of my least favorite Sondheim plays. Yeah, because I just think the book is very heavy-handed. And, and the movie was an hour shorter, so I liked that's it. That's nice. <laughs> and then there's a musical that was born to be a film, which is Les Mis, which was <gasps> atrocious. Yeah. It was yeah. just Did awful. you see the play? I never saw the play. Five times? I guess you liked it. I did. <laughs> I really, I went in ready to hate I it. Didn't like, I didn't like the music. <laughs> I was on tour with a children's show, and all the <laughs> music they were playing constantly over and over again was Les Mis. I was like, get me out of this van. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Did they let you out of the van, Michael? Oh, it was awful. It was awful. <laughs> he was in the cage in the back. I mean, every choice you could have made. When it was my turn to drive. I put, hope we changed it. <laughs> we put on talk radio. It was the only thing we could get. Um, just, uh, he, he, I didn't like the Dream Girls adaptation. No, Dream Girls. And that was a wonderful play, too. Yeah, I just... Um, just not no those and the producers remember they made a film with the producers <gasps> well with I think the original is frankly a little overrated I well yeah but it's I mean, the it's basically the Nathan Lane show and uh, Matthew Broderick is not very good in it I, yeah, I know it was, he got great reviews but it was okay I, I think the original 68 movie is so much better yeah oh well, totally yeah. yeah but then but but the musical movie you didn't see the original musical did you uh, on Broadway, yeah, no, I no. saw the movie, which far I worse, which I don't like. Far worse, I mean that, was, and that was same director. So yeah, right, Hooper. I I mean, got my girl Anne Hathaway her Oscar, so I'm very happy about Not that. Not for that though. I'm sorry, Sally Field should have won it for Lincoln. Yes, yes. Well, that's mm-hmm. true. That's Agreed. true. Thief, but, thief, thief. And uh, I tell you, one that wasn't too bad from a play uh, came out in 2007. Not too bad was Hairspray. Hairspray was very good. Just, good. just the scene with Christopher Walken and John Travolta yes. dancing in the backyard was oh, like a whole... <laughs> that it, was fun. But it was glorious. very odd, though. Travolta, unlike Harvey Firestein, Travolta really played it very, very straight. And it was like, I don't think that worked. Not supposed to... Right. It was supposed not the way Divine or yeah. in the original movie or... Or uh, anybody who played it on stage. And it was like... Are you trying to cover up something, Mr. Travolta? I, I don't know, but uh, why did you take this part if you were going to play it so straight? It was very Maybe very you peculiar. couldn't do it. I don't know, maybe. It was um, very odd. But there were a couple of good adaptations. Um, I'm a huge fan of In the Heights. I'm sorry, I don't understand why it didn't get nominated for any yeah, freaking I don't, thing this I don't year. Like I don't it. get it. I, I, didn't think it, I didn't think the original was that good. I, I thought it was I okay. You, well, I don't like In the Heights because I just don't like the music. I okay, know, you, gonna, you do. I, I do. I, I, um, just, I just don't like the music. And um, you liked the film of Hedwig. Yes, very, very much, and it's very different. Yes. And he directed he it. He directed, yeah, John Cameron uh, Mitchell directed it. I don't think he had directed a film before, and he, i got to give him credit. I mean, Hedwig is actually, if I had a list of ten best musicals from stage, Hedwig would definitely yeah, be. Yeah. And so would, and I know we've disagreed. Sweeney. With Sweeney Todd. I, thought, I just couldn't stand her. I thought she was fine. It was very, very different than no, the way Angela Lansbury played Or Patti LuPone in the revival that you didn't like, which I liked. I liked... LuPone was fine. I just didn't like... The, the instruments yeah. on stage thing? That much. <laughs> I just thought... I, and I was worse in company. Well, and I liked... Um, I liked Andrew Garfield in Tick, Tick, Boom. Boy, I did not. I wow. did not. Wow. Okay, I'll stand alone on I that smug- one. No, you, you are in the... Mug, um, mug, mug, mug. You were in the majority. <laughs> I, I and I, again, I don't like the music. I don't either. And I, I it was. Do you guys like Rent? Not really. I thought it was okay when I saw it on stage. I thought, okay, it's nice. I don't think it deserved the Pulitzer Prize. No, that was that was appalling. But this tick tick boom, uh, I just thought, I can't stand this character. Who would want to be around this character? Yeah. I... And people say, oh, Andrew Garfield is the new Olivier. And I go, well, that's actually accurate. And I don't think that's a compliment. That's <laughs> 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 Because I felt the same way about when he did Angels in America on stage, which he won the Tony Award. Yeah, it was yeah. too, too much. Too much. He does too much. And talk about seeing someone working. Yeah. Yeah, you and know? you see the wheels turn. And usually yeah, I, I love British actors. I'm, you know, I, that's why I go over to London all the time. And boy, he's not, not he's okay in 
as Jim Baker. Okay. Well, he's okay in that. In the eyes mm. of uh, Tammy of Tammy Faye. Faye. I, I not a I, great movie. I but. love the 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 brunch scene. You know where everyone from Audra McDonald to like everybody. Yeah, in the, yeah, and Cheetah Rivera shows yeah. up, and but it's it's like I didn't like the, the number. It just made me want to. Uh, take out my DVD of Sunday in the Park with George. Interesting. Because it was, it was so derivative of it. I know Sondheim was involved with that. Oh, yeah, no, he was he was paying tribute. Uh, yeah, but... Oh. So, which takes us, as we wrap it up, to the 1961 versus the 2021 West Side Stories. Thoughts, gentlemen? Wow. Well, uh, I was going to say the, big, the biggest difference is, is the writing. And the acting, that, and not just the, the quality acting, but the casting. Yes. The casting is yes. m- much more appropriate. Did you guys like Ansel Elgort in the new... I, I liked him better I than liked... Richard Beamer. Yes. That's a low bar. Yeah, because in the original, first of all, most of the actors are just they're too old. They're too old. They're supposed to be, you know, around teen or whatever. And they're not very good actors. Yeah, well, well, yeah. When when they're, they're singing and dancing, it's really good. But then when they have to act, it's like you... You see, you see actors trying to trying to act like street toughs. <laughs> yes, Russ Hamblin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> whereas, whereas in in the new version, it's 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 convincing. It's it's real, um, and the writing is just much better. Yeah. Yeah. It's Kushner. Uh, I mean, the one the part of it now something that I did prefer from the original now was the orchestration. Yes, I noticed that too. It it's was different. very bland in and and it's well in apparently the from what I've read. I don't know if this is true. Who, who knows? Bernstein did not like the orchestration from the original movie. He said he preferred a smaller orchestra. I think the real reason he didn't like it was because he didn't do it. It could be. <laughs> Possibly. But I, from what I understand, and I, I don't know what, um, how Robbins feels, because he was actually fired from the movie. People fairly, forget that. Fairly quickly. <laughs> he was, yep. Yeah. Because he, he was just taking way too, too long. Too long. And, yeah. Yeah. and that, he had never really directed... He never directed a, a, a movie. full film before. He yeah. directed uh, scenes from uh, King and I. Oh, the, okay. Uh, All right. Musical scenes, and I think he might have done a couple others, but not a full movie. But neither uh, Bernstein, Sondheim, or Arthur Lawrence were happy with uh, the with film, the except the fact that it made a made lot of money, money. and yeah. because uh, people forget the original West Side Story. Was not a financial success. Nope. They lost it their entire. Yeah, investment. everyone went to see music. It's man, it's, it's a year <laughs> and five months. Well, what my father told me because I didn't see either production, he said in general the Music Man was a better produced, better production than West Side Story. I mean, well, for West Side Story, I mean, you can use a spare set. You yeah, don't need, you right. don't need but not only production. that, but in the casting. Carol Lawrence mm. as Maria. Yeah. Carol, and Carol Larry, Lawrence and Larry was, Kurt. Is. And Larry Kurt, neither one of them had big careers after that. And was, you know, I don't reason. mean to be unkind, because Larry Kurt was very good in company. Um, but uh, Carol Lawrence, eh. You know? And compared to... Uh, even that, and of course I didn't care for Natalie Wood either, and I love Natalie Wood. Yep. But uh, this, uh, I forget the actress's name who did it. Oh, the new I, I oh, forget she's her wonderful. She's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. She's so and age appropriate. So wonderful, and they all. It's just. It's, I, well, it's all. It's more authentic. It's more appropriate for what it's supposed to be about, and we go full circle to a musical that deals with social issues. Right, and and it, right about gentrification, about tearing down this neighborhood. I didn't realize it was. It had a name. It was called San Juan Hill. Yeah. Because yeah. of the, the the Puerto Rican immigrants who had come there, yeah. and it was just obliterated to build Lincoln Center. And I love the way. I didn't think I would, because when I heard Rita Marino was being cast as Doc's widow, I thought, oh, come on. And Worked? then, not only did it work, I was in tears. Oh, yes. that was, oh, when she We can sings, spoiler oh, alert this. Oh, I'm totally yeah. spoiler, because they yeah. give her somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was beautiful. And it's and, beautiful. People who listen to this broadcast, who have been avoiding it, because it, it is not a financially successful movie, which shocks the hell out of me. Uh, please go see this, and if you can see it in the theater, it's just it's just wonderful. wonderful. And and I love I, also it had you know doing uh, one hand one heart in the mm-hmm. Hispanic Museum, which is one of the closet most beautiful places in the entire city. Just all yeah. the right yeah. choices. Yeah. I also want to give a shout out to Mike Faced, who um, played um, um, Riff. Riff. I mean, I've seen him on stage in Dear Evan Hansen, not 
as the guy who commits suicide. Well, uh, and uh, it, it, this may become the second time since uh, since Godfather that two different actors win an Oscar. No, for he's the not same... nominated. No, no, but for, uh, oh, R- she, R- Anita. Yes, yeah. she's probably she's favorite. She, she win. Was and she should great. win. She was amazing. She should win, and that's a strong category. We'll talk about that next episode. Yeah, I yep. loved. I loved. But, uh, I loved the way they did America. Yeah. Oh, that yep. was great. Oh, yeah. Great. Brilliant. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, I so so we and John's right. We have come full circle because a musical is really born. The successful musical is really born from uh, a, a, a involving and interweaving social issues into it, and that's where this West Side Story yeah. takes us back that the '61 never did. Uh, you know, and there are a lot of good things about the '61, but I I choose this because you're right. When when Rita Moreno is given somewhere, all of a sudden it's it's beyond this yep. love story yeah. and it's about the entire not just Latinx experience but the entire immigrant experience yep. Yep. it's everybody yep. yeah. it's, it's just and it's so moving brilliant yeah. brilliant and she and she she kills and it I, well, I'm just I know so many people who just will f- refuse to see it they're crazy you know refuse to see it why because they're so devoted to the 61 yeah, yeah. or they don't like it period or I don't oh well that's what I mean I mean is there another musical that has better music in it nope I, th- yeah, I think yeah, it's a better yeah, one. It's, it's, I mean, that's the main reason why I like it so much. Well, and, you know, it'd be interesting to see in this time of social upheaval and strife, you know, which is where the musicals were born and raised. I wonder what we're going to get. I wonder if we're going to get some more socially conscious musicals or we're going to go escapist or where it's going to go. It's hard to, hard I to think imagine. We'll probably, I think we'll probably have both. But no. I'm really glad to see that they're back. <laughs> it was it was. A well, long I was when period. I saw West Side Story. Yeah. It wasn't when I saw Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah, oh boy. Never have yeah. I enjoyed a play more and hated a movie. I could not agree with you uh, more. It was just like. So there you have it, my friends and and listeners. Uh, the pocket history of uh, <laughs> of the musical. We did an entire genre in about an hour and change. So all right, uh, let's hope this works for you. And again, as we always say, I hope that this. We mentioned some films that you haven't heard of, that you haven't seen, and this will open some doors for you. Um, so uh, we turn to Michael now with our. Before you start, oh. yes, the uh, the movie that you were referring to of Doris Day is called Romance on the High Seas. It's um, fun. Yeah. Well, she's it, but, yeah. and she. But also, what's really fun about it is it's not the Doris Day no. involved. No, it's not the pillow talk. She's a secondary yeah. girl. She's kind of a tart. Yeah. Yes, and I really like her. Yeah. Yes. yeah, and it's 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 really you're right. It's a lot of fun. It's it's witty. And, and I love Janice Page, who's still with us and is doing cabaret acts yeah. at wow. the age ninety eight. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So we turn to Mike with uh, with a necrology, and we we lost a couple of yeah. uh, pretty I, important. I'm gonna people. I'm gonna go in order of their deaths. Howard Hessman. Uh, Dr. One. Johnny Fever. No, yes. for that. He was also in the sitcoms One Day at the, uh, One Day at a Time and Head of the Class. I liked Head of the Class. His movies included Billy Jack, The Sunshine Boys, Shampoo, Silent Movie, The Big Bus, This Is Spinal Tap, That's Dr. Right. Detroit, Police Academy 2, Their First Assignment, a role he refused to, uh, he refused to play again. <laughs> <laughs> Clue about Schmidt, Flight of the Navigator, and he was a member of the improv group, The Committee. He's got one of the best lines in Spinal Tap. He's the manager of the other band, and they come to talk to him, and he's like, yeah, guys, I'd love to hang out and talk, but i got to go sit down over there. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Monica Vitti, uh, 91. Monica Vitti. Known for the, her films uh, and her relationship with Michelangelo and Tonioni, La Aventure, La Note, Le Clis, Desierto Rosso, Le Red Desert, uh, Red Desert yeah. and later in the early 80s, The Mystery of Oberwald, which I'd never heard never of. Never heard of? No. That's an Antonioni film? Yep. Wow. Her English language films were Modest, Modesty Blaze for Blaise. Joseph Losey, which I saw as a kid and I liked it. Okay. I was only 11. We have to do a Joseph Losey episode. I, w- I was, but I, I mean, she was very sexy and it was so weird seeing Dirk Bogart in a comedy even though he did the uh, Doctor movies. And uh, her other English language movie was An Almost Perfect Person from Michael Ritchie, which he did in 1979. Mm, don't know. It took place at the Cannes Film Festival. It was a love story between her and Keith Carradine. Okay. It was pretty good. She was also featured in Louis Bunuel's The Phantom of Liberté. Sure. 
In the 1980s, she did mostly comedies, and she retired in 1992. And sadly, she had Alzheimer's for yes. the last 15 uh, years. Yep. Which, yeah. I just recently rewatched La Ventura. What a great God, movie. even on a small screen. What a yeah. great movie. Yeah. I like it. It's funny. The first I like time it I, more and more. I do too, because the first time I saw it, I wasn't crazy about it, and I kept reading so much about it. And then I, when I, as I watched it again, I was like, "This is really good." Each time I've watched it, I've liked it I liked more. It's all four great. of those. It's great. Are wonderful. Douglas Trumbull, seventy-nine, visual effects mastermind. He's also a producer and director. Of course, he's known for assisting Kubrick on 2001, A Space Odyssey, yep. where he did the slit span photography. For the for the uh, yeah, gateway. And the trippy five-minute yeah. scene with Kira Durley in the pad. Really great scene. Uh, received three Oscar nominations for Close Encounter of the Third Kind, Star Trek The Motion Picture, sure. and Blade Runner. Which I read in one of the obituaries that he uh, he was fired. Uh, Antonioni fired him from Zabriskie Point, and he took some of his ideas that he was going to use for Zabriskie Point and use them in uh, Blade Runner. Interesting. Yeah, he directed. And Did they say why he was fired? They uh, didn't say. It wasn't. They didn't get along. It just that uh, he just. They were just. They're not right for the movie. Yeah. Kind of thing. yeah. Yeah. He directed Brainstorm, right? Yes, and I want to talk about that a tiny bit in detail. It's something that the obituaries have been leaving off, and it really infuriates me. He, he directed and produced both Silent Running and Brainstorm. Now, all the obituaries said Brainstorm was not a success and it was known for being Natalie, Natalie Wood's, Wood's last movie. Sure. What the obituaries do not mention was that after Natalie Wood died, Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, which was in financial hot water then, wanted to scrap the movie and have the insurance company pay for the whole thing, saying mm. because Natalie Wood could not finish the movie, the movie is unreleasable. And Trumbull said, no. No, no. She had to. She had two scenes left to film. It can be easily re, redone, and he did finish. He did finish the movie because he didn't have that much left to, left to shoot. It was in litigation for over a year and a half. Wow! Because uh, Metro Golden Way just wanted the money, and Trumbo, along with the insurance company who didn't want to pay for it, wanted it released. And I did see the film. For you know, I'm not a big sci-fi person, but. It, it wasn't confusing. It definitely didn't, should not have been scrapped. And it has not been in any of the obituaries. And I'm really ticked off about that a little no, bit. No, but a groundbreaking, a yeah. revolutionary in special And then he, pretty, then he pretty much left the business. Right. Uh, but he did come back and assisted uh, Terrence Malick in the, uh, Tree? in the Tree of Life. Yeah. In that sequence, in the, uh, oh my, in the 20 minute creation of the universe sequence. Love it. Ivan Reitman. 75, director of Ghostbusters, the Ghostbusters 2, Stripes, yeah. Meatballs, Legal Eagles, Twins, Kindergarten Cop, Dave, Father's Day. Not Caddyshack? Or did no. Ramis direct Caddyshack? Yeah. He, um, um, and of course he produced National Lampoon's Animal, Animal House, House, but did not yeah. direct it. Uh, and he did get an Oscar nomination for co-producing Up in the Air with his uh, son, who directed mm. it. Oh. Anything really no, you want well, to say about Ivan? No, because being incredibly influential for someone of my age mm -hmm. who was, say, 13 when Animal House yeah. came out yeah. and was, you know, was uh, was 18 when Ghostbusters came out. So, you know, a lot of my gener my generation mm -hmm. sense of humor was shaped by those films, you know, turning the SNL stars. Oh, well, Animal, especially Animal House is still very right. funny. Yes. I, you know... I watched it recently. You didn't like it? I didn't like it as much. As much. I loved it as a college student. Mm -hmm. But now it's like... It's Makes you like, cringe a little bit? Yeah, the humor is kind of <laughs> sexist. Yes. A little I, bit. You know? Little face just, it, John. You threw up on Dean Wormer. <laughs> <laughs> David Brenner, 59, film editor. He won the Oscar mm -hmm. with Joe Hutching for Born on the Fourth of July. He did a lot of Good work film. for um, Oliver Stone. He, other credits include Talk Radio, The Doors, Heaven and Earth, World Trade Center, Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps, and some a few uh, non Oliver Stone, yeah. non uh, Oliver Stone films. Uh, the Day After Tomorrow, oh God. Lolita, Independence Day, and at the time of his death, he was working on Avatar Two. No, I don't know. I I, I kind of liked Avatar Two, Avatar One. I, I liked was... it much better than. Uh, 
Don't Kevin tell me you liked it better than Hurt Locker, which beat it for uh, Best Picture. No. Okay. No. <laughs> no. Because we were going to have words. No, 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 no. <laughs> Fisticuffs. <laughs> Joy Todd, <laughs> casting director. Worked on several Sidney Lumet films, including Network, Prince of the City, The Verdict, Family Business, Q&A, Garbo Talks. She also cast Ghostbusters. Yeah. Once Upon a Time in America, Moscow on the Hudson, which she also appeared in a small role, Scenes from Wall, and several Rambo films. All right, pay the bills. And a couple days ago, Sally Kellerman. Yes. She appeared in 54 theatrical films and over 100... Wow. Two, hundred. she was in that many movies. And 100 TV shows. Wow. She worked a lot. I just remember her from MASH and Back to School. That's yeah, about those are the two. Sally Kellerman. Films. But she's best known for playing Margaret Hot Lips Houlihan in MASH, right. for which she received an Academy Award nomination right. for Best Supporting Actress, lost it to Helen Hayes in Airport. I remember as a 14-year-old going, what the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry, guys. That one... We'll bleep that in post. She also... Um, um, Worked for Altman in Brewster McCloud, mm. The Player, uh, Ready to Wear, which I think is it's actually an Altman, uh, underrated Altman. I've never seen it. It's good. It's fun. And uh, Welcome to L.A., which Altman produced. Rudolph. was yeah. Alan Rudolph's directorial debut. Other notable films were The Boston Strangler, Last of the Red Hot Lovers, Slither, Lost Horizon, the musical. There it is again. It keeps coming and back. And <laughs> she actually, from what I remember, I haven't seen it in 45 years, but... Gave the most credible performance in that film. Uh, the Big Bus, A Little Romance, Blake Edwards' That's Life, and most famously, Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield. Which I have to admit is fun. Is She's fun. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely hilarious. And she appeared in three TV series, including The Young and the Restless, which she was oh. nominated for a daytime Emmy. She also did a lot of cabaret. She liked to sing and uh, did a lot of cabaret work. All right. And that's it. And that's it. So now we move on to America's favorite segment. It's John Myers. <laughs> it's John Myers quote quiz. Drum roll, please. You... Okay, so the quote from our last episode was Just remember, beautiful, everything gets old if you do it often enough. So if you want to find out about monotony real quick, marry Dwayne. Marry Dwayne. That was Ellen Burstyn speaking to Sybil Shepherd in the last picture show, which we talked about. Quite a bit in the last episode because we were talking about Peter Peter Bogdanovich. So, a new quote. I'm going to give a little hint. It's from a 1950s musical. Ooh. All right. Well, I used to be bad when I was a kid. But ever since then, I've gone straight, as as has been proved by my record. 33 arrests and no convictions. Mm, I'm going to hazard a guess, but I don't know for sure. But if you want to know the absolute down low and for real, check us out, find the answer, on our website, cleverly entitled www.vintagesand.com. We will see you there, and there we will have all kinds of extra information, including a link to the list that Mike was talking about, the AFI's uh, top musicals. I'll post the link to that there. And uh, and we are we are out. All right, we did our first genre piece. I'm excited about it. It's it's it's, it's all right. It's it's totally worth it. You can't blame my necrology for this one. No, <laughs> no, no, no. And so next, uh, the Oscars are coming in uh, uh, just about a month. Uh, from today so our next episode will be our because we like the way the format worked last year and we got a lot of good feedback from you our love our beloved audience um sort of best of 2021 combined with a reaction to the oscars i'm and here. this has been in my opinion a great year for film yeah i i can't I, argue i i yeah uh mm-hmm. so we will see how it goes hopefully they will they will choose. They will choose well and choose wisely. Um, remember, please, that Vintage Sand is available on uh, Apple Podcasts and on SoundCloud. We haven't quite decided the Spotify thing, but I mean, it's not. Oh, gonna... I thought we decided. Oh, well, I thought we're off. We're off Spotify. All right, I, I'll take care of that. Miss Melissa's back, so we can get off of Spotify. So and uh, express our displeasure with the whole a, Joe a no, Rogan. It's thing. a no-brainer. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm sure our leaving will completely devastate 
Spotify, sure. and they'll dump Joe Rogan in two seconds. Yes, but we'll see about that. It will be the headline of the news. They know where their toast is. That buttered. would be nice. That would be lovely. So uh, and we are, as always, a five nines and a four production. Uh, I want to thank uh, Melissa for her technical help, Mama Sue for the use of the hall, uh, Gabby for the cool ass logo, and check us out again. Go to the website. Um, please be happy. Please be safe. Don't take off the masks too, too quickly, but we may, next time we do this, we may be maskless. So I'm very happy about that. And, uh, most importantly of all, our wish to you always may be, may your favorite films always be streaming.